Catch me outside. All right, all right. Earl is on the smooth tunes. Amazing. All right, everybody. Hey, it's your man, Simeon, with the Simeon Henderson Show. And I am ready to have a great time on this Thursday. Everybody knows that Thursday is one of my favorite days of the week. And it's not just because it's the Simeon Henderson Show, but it's because it's the time where I get to come together with some creative people and some great people. And we can get into it and teach you guys about how to walk in your purpose, how to achieve your goals and your dreams, and how to be the best you. I have a great show lined up for you today. I have some filmmakers and actors, directors, and it's going to be very insightful, very informative. So I want you guys to hold on to your seats and I want you guys to get ready as we get ready to start the Simeon Henderson show right now. Let's go. Ain't no stopping now. It ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now, there ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now, it ain't no stopping now. Ain't no stopping now, it ain't no stopping now. This what you wanted, what you wanted. Cause ain't no turning back, turning back. This what you wanted, what you wanted. Cause ain't no turning back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Simeon Henderson Show, where we are giving a voice to the people. Tonight, we are excited because we have artist and filmmaker Shias Love on the show. Shias, is a, he's a native Chicagoan, best known as The Connector. That's right. He's known as The Connector. Shias believes in connecting people through emotion, one lyric, script, and conversation at a time. And Shias established, he was established back, uh, back. he established Back to Emotion Publishing uh, Company. And um, it's just, they call him the gentle giant. He's a rising star. The Simeon Henderson Show is also pleased to have with us filmmaker Seven Okima Gunn and actor and filmmaker Masekwa Myers. So without further ado, I want to welcome to the Simeon Henderson Show, my first guest of the night. Shyest love. What's going on, brother? How you feeling? Come on now. I'm ready, baby. What? That's an intro. <laughs> ready. I, I see you. I see you. I see you. So, man, we're gonna get into it. It's um it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show, uh, talking about what you have going on. You have some amazing things going on. Everybody, I'll be showing you the video that he did. And um, he so you have a screening coming up this weekend, right? It was this. Uh, it was actually Saturday before the city was shut down. Yeah. Right. So, so we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. So let's get into it, man. Tell us about the the um, the um We Built It move it, movement. Tell us about the movement. Definitely. Um, first, let me start by saying grateful to be here. Literally, when I'm going through my page and I see your morning conversations in the morning, it really does like get me in the right mindset. So thank you. For that doing it. Um, so for me, the the we built it move um, is in three phases: uh, song, mm -hmm. uh, a short film, and documentary. Uh, uh -huh. What basically started was uh, I have a ten year old son, and I've been back and forth with my son's mom in court. Uh, finally, won custody of him, um, and I didn't want to risk 
because I just want custody. I didn't want to risk going to protest with everything happening. You know, I'm from the South Side of Chicago. Somebody stepped on my Jordans. It was going down. <laughs> so I just say, you know what? Let me let me find a different way to to contribute. So I created. Uh, we started to maybe 20 different Chicago artists. Uh, three three popped up in the studio with me, uh, along with Percy Beatty, Grammy Award winner. Uh, he produced a song for me. We just worked together to be able to to spark conversation, to speak for our city, and to speak for our people. Basically, letting them know where would America be without black culture, black invention, and black creativity. Yeah, and because right. of that, we deserve reparations. And because of that, it just um, we made a visual for it. it. Became a short film, and in the process of doing that, it became a documentary because of the adversity I was going through. Um, right. Son, uh, had heart surgery, had somebody die of COVID the first day. Wow. I was filming, like a lot had went on. Um, and even now, um, adversity still happened. You know, uh, I sent out invitations uh, for a private premiere just for media. And uh, uh, three weeks, a month ago, we were good COVID. And then now we've had three different situations where it's like yes, the city's right. like, no, we can't, we can't have anybody else. So um, at the end of the day, I'm grateful that I woke up this morning and I'm grateful to be able to still create and speak for my people. So I'm good with that. But th that's how the movement started with We Build It. Wow. So I I want to backtrack a couple of sentences. You said that your you said that your son had heart surgery. My son was born with pulmonary artesia with VSD, which means his valve doesn't connect to his heart. The day he came mm -hmm. out of the day he came out of the womb. I probably could only hold him for 20 seconds. He had to go rush into surgery. Um, wow. And get heart surgery. And because the stent that they put in his heart, he has mm -hmm. to get that uh, updated, you know, over yes. time with his heart growing. Right. So he, he he turned 10 this year and he ended up getting surgery. Um, and he's still healing from surgery now. So wow. uh, just to be in that situation during the time with all this, you know, 2020 and, you know, police brutality and everything else, just a lot mm -hmm. of diversity to make this film, but you know, it's all good. Yes, it is all good because you are here and I see that you're a man of faith, man. And you're staying faithful and focused and I appreciate that. Uh, talk to us about your vision for bridging the gap of communications with various forms of media. Talk to us about that because you're talking about lyrically through um, music, poetry, film and TV. Talk to us about that. So as storytellers, I feel it's our duty to, uh, to be honest, not only speak for the people, but speak your truth. Um, when I hear songs at 3 a.m., I don't just hear songs. I see visuals. So uh, for, for, for some of these situations, um, like my last premiere last year, I created a song and I uh, put together a film and we you know, put it in a the movie theater, this and this and that. So when I'm speaking, I don't necessarily just think in one dimensional situation. I always think, and how can I make it bigger? Um, how can I, you know, um, so whether it's a conversation party where we're hosting an event and we're literally sparking dialogue to get people to understand each other, white, black, Chinese, Asian, big, fat, skinny, divorced, single, um, or if it's just being able to create a song that sparks conversation or create a movie that sparks dialogue, dealing with police brutality or dealing with infidelity. I like to spark conversation. I like to start start things that will create conversation for us to talk about. Because um, I grew up in a family where things were swept underneath the rug. So I'm always about shaking that rug now that I'm grown. I'm like, let's shake it. Shake it. So. I'm, I'm here. Don't think I'm gone. I just want to put you front and center while you were describing that. I was like, so, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Look, people, it was about you. Uh, so tell us, tell us, uh, Shias, tell us about uh, the message of empowerment you offered as a panelist speaking to the juvenile detention center. So what, what you're doing in essence is you're going out and you're using your voice to affect change in the communities, not only with our youth, but with, with adults as well. So what was that like for you going in there and um, being a panelist and speaking to those kids? Because I know that I've been, I've been to the juvenile detention center several times, me being an ex teacher, I've been in there and seen some of my old students, you know? So it's, yeah. So it's one of those things where they looked at me and they kind of put their head down and I told them, I said, no, don't put your head down. I said, you're here now. I said, but what are you going to do next? 
So that's what we have to encourage them that when they make mistakes, when they miss it and they fall, how are they going to get up and what are they going to do when they get up? So what was it like for you being a panelist at the juvenile detention center? Um, to be honest, it threw me off because, um, man, I just seen so many young black men. I was just like, no, like mm -hmm. you hear about it on TV, you, you know, you see it, whatever, but just to see it in person, it, it just threw me. Like I was real close to tears because it's like, yo, this is, these are our people. And to yeah. be honest, none of them were looking down. I guess the reason why is because, so Cassandra, Cassandra Bell, she put it together. Yep. And I uh, went, you know, there and I was speaking to her. I actually drove from, I forgot about it. Uh, ended up getting a reminder, drove from Michigan, where I used to live, came back to Chicago and had a bag mm -hmm. change. Went to the gas station, gave the man like, hey, this is $20 and quarters, nickels and pennies and dimes. And he ended up letting me just, you know, put 20 in a, a gas tank. And I actually drove here and ended up, you know, talking to him. And I was the last person to talk. There's maybe... 20 people up there from the entertainment industry and I'm just sitting up there and I'm just like, yo, they said everything. What, what else do you say? And I mm. just said to him, I say, you know, I drove here uh, with a bag of change because I wanted to speak to you. I wanted you to understand that there is never a time to give up. There's never wow. a time for you to put yourself in a situation and to beat yourself, to self-sabotage yourself, to, to put yourself yeah. in a position where people say, because you did this, uh, we're going to count it against you forever. Don't ever put yourself in that situation. And so, mm. uh, you know, I end up meeting some people from their growing some relationships, but really it was, it was a life changing experience because, right. um, you know, I went in there with the mindset of, I don't know what's going to happen, but I left with the mindset of, of knowing like those, those people are going to be affected in such a good way. We show yes. so much love to them and care for them. And I was grateful to be honest. That's cool. That's cool, man. I appreciate it. I just think what you're doing, man, is so it's so necessary because especially now with the way kids are and the youth are, they're so into TV. They're so into music. This is a way that you can grab their attention and you can educate them and actually show them that it's cool to still finish school. It's cool to do the right thing. And you can also, you can do your music. You can, you can be an artist. You can be whatever you want to. And, and you don't have to worry about what people are saying or how they're looking at you because you're being an individual and you're walking in your creative gifts and using your talents. And we, when we can encourage them to do that, I think that's when we can change the narrative. And that's when the focus starts to shift and we start to get better results from our youth and whatever we need to happen in our in our um society so before before i ask you the last few questions i have to ask you i want to show everyone a little bit of your work everybody you're watching the Simeon henderson show where we're giving a voice to the people on intellectualradio.com we're live on facebook and youtube shout out to my producer in-house earl the other winfrey back on the ones and twos and i got to give a shout out to my executive producer jamani and i'm d i want to give um shout out to my producer jose perez my creative director shelton smith and Darren DeShazer. So, but before we get back and we finish with Shia's Love, I want you guys to take a little bit, uh, take a look at his work. I want you guys to check out We Built It by Shia's Love right here on the Simeon Henderson Show. Get in tune. Here we go. <laughs> Something will lose it all. Lose it all. Maybe that's what needed to happen. We all came together for the cause. Who built this country? All the rain 
exist I'm floating to the surface No longer sweeping you under the rug Won't sit back Watching the land Gonna fight for the lives that we took Hey everybody, you're watching the Simeon Henderson Show where we're giving a voice to the people. When I talk about deep, and just, I got the chills right now watching that, talking about we built it. So guys, we're going to pay some bills really quick, and we're going to come back and we're going to finish up with my brother Shias Love. I'm talking about that was super deep. It was intense, and uh, we're going to finish up with him. But before we do, we want to pay some bills. I want you to check out my people at um, Recon Credit Repair. If you need your repair, your credit repaired, you need to check out my brother AC Carter over at Recon. I've been working with him. Mine is going up. I'm in the 700s again. So check it out, everybody. We'll be right back with Chaya's Look. All right, everybody, you're watching the Sydney Henderson Show, where we're giving a voice to the people. We are here with the one and only Shias Love. I call him the gentle giant. He's a rising star, and he is doing it all. So I just want to, um, I can't I can't leave this interview, man, without asking you about this. How did it feel to be nominated for Best PSA, Best Commercial, and um, and to be featured in, uh, on on Progressive Time on a Progressive Time blog for the uh, in the hip hop and have a hip hop exclusive. Like, what was that like? That's an honor. 
it re- so it felt amazing and it felt even more amazing because <sighs> out of my whole career I've only I've worked with others but I've never released my own music mm-hmm. I've only released two songs and it's funny because the first song was about Trayvon Martin right and this song is about we built it and so this is interesting because those two songs catapulted me in a whole bunch of different situations. I was just featured in Chicago Defender and this and this and this to be on different shows. And now I'm on your show. I'm a huge fan. So for me, I'm just blessed to be able to to know that I can speak for my people and it means something in, th- in this day and age coming from a city that, you know, hosts, you know, greats like Common and different others. So humbling, definitely. Okay, so man, before you get out of here, tell everybody what's next, what's coming up, and how I'll, I'll put up how they can find you. But I need you to tell everybody what's next and what's coming up. Yes, yes, please. So we built it. It's a movement right now. The song is available um, everywhere you can stream music. It's on YouTube. Um, we also have a we built the challenge for any singers that's out there. I think they can hit those notes. Um, I would be regretful if I didn't bring up the fact that. You know, Miss Michelle, Felicia Patton, and uh, Denera Blue, uh, Dr. Percy Beatty, who produced the song, who's a, who's a Grammy Award winner in Chicago. Those are the people who believed in me, uh, took a chance on me, believed in my vision, um, stayed up to me at 2, 3 a.m., hearing me talk crazy, but believed in me <laughs> and, you know, wanted to wanted to take on this challenge. So um, thank you so much. Again, we have the film coming out from Miss Mary Q. Angel to Nick Bravo and some other few people. Uh, Brooks Media, Lord have mercy. Um, he's he's phenomenal. You're going to love his work when you see it in the film. But right now, I don't have a specific date because of the situation that happened uh, with yeah. everything happening because we wanted to to roll it out a certain way. But I can let right. you know, please follow me. Uh, we built the shyest love music, all social media. I uh, would love if you just take on this challenge with us to, to understand we're educating our people. We're letting our people know who built it from from the inventions to the culture to the mm-hmm. to everything else but also um the first fifty thousand of the proceeds goes to chicago public school you're looking to give back so uh thank you so much for bringing me on the show um i can't wait to watch the other interviews of the uh, next two ladies and i'm excited man i'm excited for yeah, chicago so- so make sure you let me know anything that we can do at the Semi Henderson Show and intellectualradio.com to help push the movement because that's what we're here for. We're here to, we're here to build black. And it's not just about black, it's about everybody. But we are concentrating on building black because we just want to make different things and different opportunities available to our people. And I just want to tell you man, you're truly a strong brother. I, uh, I have to make sure make sure you send me your email so I can send you the download of the Believe album, the the motivational album, and and I'll send you your B symbolic shirt, which means simply your best being deeply rooted stimulated. So everything you're doing, you're worthy, and we appreciate you, brother. Everybody, Mr. Shy Love, Shyest Love, right here on the Timmy Anderson Show. We built it. It's on all platforms. Check it out and check him out on all social media at Shyest Love Music. We are here to make it happen. So thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. And I know you'll still be tuned in to the rest of the show. Everybody, we will be right back with Miss Seven Okima Gunn and Miss Saqua Myers. They are in the building. I'm super excited. The show is getting amped, guys. I'm telling you, we get better and better every week. Ain't that right, Earl? It's getting better and better every week. We're going to take this to another level. We're going to be on your social media platforms. We're going to be on your TVs. We are going to show you how we do it. So I know you guys are dealing with the pandemic. Don't forget that there are places that have set up uh, Uber Eats and, and DoorDash and different places so you can make sure you're fed and safe during this time. And one of my sponsors over at Ben's Barbecue, they are doing just that. So if you're not hungry, I guarantee you, you will be after you see this commercial. We'll be right back with Seven Oki McGunn and Masequa Myers of Black Mama Sable right after these messages. Hey, I'm Mr. Chicago, and I love Ben's Barbecue, and they're here to serve you during this time. Hi, I'm Tyrone, known as Ben. And I'm Linda here at Ben's Barbecue, located in the Austin community, 5931 West North Avenue. 
Chicago, Illinois, and we're open six days a week, closed on Mondays. And during this period, we are here for you. And we offer several sizes in our safe and secure containers. Here at Ben's, we have a variety of combos. My favorite combo is the Hungry Man. That is two wings, fish and tips, or wings and tips, or the option of chicken tips, turkey tips, or pork tips. The wood burning aquarium is a dying art. Here at Ben's, we're keeping it alive. You can order your food through DoorDash, Uber Eats, or Takeout. We're here to serve you. At Ben's, we appreciate your business. Uber Eats has set up a customer appreciation, which help pays the salary of our workers during this tough time. So if you're looking for delicious food and you want to be a help during this time, come visit us at Ben's Barbecue. And remember, if it's barbecue, then it's Ben's. Hey, everybody, you're watching the Simeon Henderson Show, where we are giving a voice to the people. It is time for the second half. And you know, after the halftime show, it got to get better. And it's going to get better with these two ladies. We have Seven Okima Gunn. She is the writer and director and producer of the film Black Mama Sable, which is playing at the Black Harvest Film Festival, the 26th annual Black Harvest Film Festival right now. And I have the awesome, the very talented, lovely, beautiful Masequa Myers on the show today. And we're going to be talking about the movie and just what's going on in the world. So without further ado, please welcome these lovely ladies to the Simeon Henderson Show. Hey, ladies, how you doing? Hello. How are you? <laughs> Glad to be here. I want. Let me see if I can get a better view. There, there it is. I like that better. Here we go. So, ladies, you're here finally. I want to say, Seven, I love the rap. I'm going to say, no. why I love the top. <laughs> and all of the, look, all of the books behind you showing that. Well, you know, I come from that era. <laughs> I, I, and, you know. you're paying it forward. That's the yeah. thing that I love about you guys. You ladies have been doing some outstanding work. And it's it's going to transcend, not just to in Chicago, but it's going to it's going to travel and people really need what you're doing. So let's get into it. Seven. Yes. We're here today to talk about Black Mama Sable. Now, everybody saw Seven on the show a couple of weeks ago. She was one of the producers that was premiered with the people from the Black Harvest Film Festival. And now we're talking about her movie that we didn't get a chance to talk about, Black Mama Sable. And I am honored and blessed <laughs> to be in the movie as well. Masequa plays my beautiful mother. And <laughs> let me just say this. It was a delight to work with you ladies. And we're going to get to the part about being able to work safely during COVID. Mm -hmm. But before we get there, I want to start with you, Seven. Mm -hmm. As a filmmaker, what is the relatable message in the movie about Black Mama Sable? Okay, well, there's so many themes in that film. Um, I feel as though... Um, it's kind of, I have to go back from where it started. Uh, it started as a poem. So I never even thought that it was going to be a film. Uh, it, during the pandemic, I would say maybe March, April, May, I had I lo I lost two relatives to COVID. And, but even before that, uh, with the pandemic, it, everything was so unknown. Nobody knew anything about what was going on. They had to shut down. I was kind of like in my, you know, cave writing and, I created this character, Black Mama Sable. And so the character represents not one person. You know, I thought of, the first person I thought of, thought of was Masequa. And I didn't even know she was going to be playing the character. So I was thinking of Masequa and Margaret Burroughs and Gwendolyn Brooks and uh, Lori Lightfoot and just people that have wisdom about the community and people that, you know, I would want to talk to during this time. So it was just, a, you know, like a character that I made up because it was like a coping mechanism. Like, you know, uh, Black Mama Sable is like, she's like a comforter, a storyteller, a griot. Um, she's got that inside a supernatural person. And so that it started from a poem. And so she was the main character at first. Then Cadence came in because I wanted that teenage perspective. And then the, the next level was, Officer Rashid uh, Taylor as a police officer. So I call this piece 
three, um, I call it temperature of the temperature of, of these times with the legacy of three generations. Mm -hmm. So um, it deals with teenage angst and uh, legacy, the supernatural African-American history, mm -hmm. African culture. We got black father, black, uh, you know, the black man. Uh, we've got the, you know, the grandmother and her wisdom and the community. Uh, there's so many themes in there in eight minutes. And I'm I'm actually qu kind of shocked that I just squeezed it in, you know, <laughs> in eight minutes because it just it's just jam packed with so many things. It really should be. It's, you know, like it could be a film. It could be, a, a, you know, a graphic novel. There's so many things you can do with that. And so I think it was just birthed out of this 2020 era and what's going on right now. I never thought it was going to be a film or it did what it did. It has its own personality and it's just it's just pushing itself. I love the excitement in your voice when you talk about it. Masekwa. Yes. I want to talk to you from an acting standpoint, because I know for me, Black Mama Sable was the first film that I got to work on during the pandemic. For me, it was therapy. Hmm. It felt good. I, I, everybody, it was a safe environment. It felt good to get to work and do what it is that we love doing and tell this story. What was it like for you when Seven asked you to do the role and you read the script? What was it like for you taking on this role of Black Mama Sable? Well, I'm going to tell you that I was quite surprised uh, that Okima uh, came to me and inquired if I was interested in being in this film. Uh, she brought me out of retirement as an actor, actually. <laughs> I've been a couple of decades, uh, uh, a few, since I've been in front of the camera. But what I did was let the door stay open, you know, and the opportunity presented itself. So, of course, I read the script. and. I said, I'm interested. I really want to do this. And I wanted to do it because of some of the things you said, Simeon, a few moments ago. It, it felt good. It was positive. It, it showed uh, a black father trying to raise his daughter and wanting to connect with him. It showed a generation, it showed generational uh, connection. It showed the grandmother, it showed the granddaughter. So the three generations she talked about, we don't see that enough as far as I'm concerned. And, and we don't have that in our homes like it used to be. So we're not learning from each other. And then another thing that was so intriguing to me was the fact that she brought in some spiritualism. She brought in um, some things that happened in my family and in the culture of black people that I'm aware of, and that is uh, dreams. Uh, dream and and visions and and I think I think a lot of us just don't talk about it, but we have aunts and mothers and fathers who who actually see and have visions and that's she she had the audacity she had the nerve to to approach that topic and I I was so proud of her for that so those are the reasons why I said I want to do this. That's awesome. That's awesome. Seven. When we look at the characters, right? We look at the characters, mm -hmm. we look at Mama Sable, then we look at the granddaughter who Jada played mm -hmm. my daughter. When you think about the character in Mama Sable, the teen character, how is she relatable to our modern day youth? And how was my character relatable to the modern day parents? Well, um, you know, I, if, if, I've taught middle school before, so I understand that that age bracket. Um, I think for a teenager now, it's it's very difficult because it's it's confusing. We, you know, there's again, there's so much that's unknown, and they're seeing a lot of things, uh, you know, that people that you know some things that adults haven't even seen, you know. And I think this is a different era that it's kind of like they have to grow up sooner. You know, some people, they're just being exposed to more and it's the social media and it's, you know, television and they're just being exposed to so many things. I think it can be, it's almost like overload. So um, I really kind of put myself in, in Cadence's shoes because I can relate to the middle school uh, kids because I teach them. But as also, I just remember how I was 
when I was that age and so innocent and just wondering about the world. And so for that character, I think I was just trying to tell what was going on now currently. And um, I just actually spoke to Jada before this and I was talking to her about how similar was she to the character. Um, and she said, well, she, she was saying that she probably wouldn't, you know, go out and, and take something from the riots, but she was saying, as far as being a teenager, she had a lot of concerns and issues about, you know, what's going on during this time. So I act, I asked her, what are the similarities between her and Cadence? And she was saying she might not be as, you know, rebellious as Cadence, but she has some of the same concerns that Cadence has. And she also talked about how, you know, when she has a problem, she goes to her grandmother mm -hmm. and how Masekwa was very comforting to her and Simeon, <clears throat> how Simeon, you're like, a, you know, a godfather to her and she loves, she loves her father. So those things were very similar as far as being a teenager and being a child um, that she appreciated those conversations and that hug, you know, that at the end, um, I'm not going to spoil, you know, spoil it, but she appreciated <laughs> all of those things, you know, that was in the film. And she said it was a release for her. She felt like, um, like she was like relieved when she played that role because she 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 put her feelings into the character, and it was like, it was like the it was like a pressure was you know came off of her. Like it was just like a peeling off of her uh, of her um you know pressures and things. So she was going through a lot of those things as well. And as far as uh, um, Officer Rashid Taylor, um, I picked you specifically for this role because you were a, a black a police officer. And so I feel as though you were very much like that character and um, as well as Masekwa. Um, I think that uh, I was very fortunate to have you, but I feel like Officer Rashid, he has so many issues dealing with, you know, his, his daughter, um, that struggle, um, having to, uh, be a, uh, you know, a single, a single parent, not, not, not just, um, well in the film, you know, there's, they're divorced, but he's kind of raising his daughter and going through all these things. And they have, they kind of have this argument going back and forth because of, something that he's done. So they're holding each other accountable. So there's that back and forth that we see in the beginning that causes that uh, conflict. I think the thing that was so cool for me about the, the film was having a relationship with Masekwa and Jada outside of the film, you know, knowing Masekwa, knowing Paymon, knowing you, being able to know them as good people mm -hmm. and having interactions with them. Like Jada, I've been like a mentor for Jada for about five years now, since mm -hmm. she was, I think since she was 10. But it's one of those things that I could really, I could really get into the character because I was, a, I'm, I'm an educator, I'm a motivator, I'm a life coach, you know? So, so being able to take people's real life experiences and and work with them and talk to them and and counsel them if you will and just be a a vessel to give them life you know through their thoughts and their feelings mm -hmm. i think it was one of those things where like you said at the end that hug it felt so real mm -hmm. i have a daughter i have a daughter and i have two teenage boys you know so in my mind it's like, man, I'm thinking about the love I have for them as well as as well as the love that I have for the youth of today. And then people like Jada, who I've mentored and worked with, there's an even greater love. But I think what you captured in this short film was the feeling of family, was the feeling of love, the feeling of accountability and purpose. Mm -hmm. So I and think, I think um, Simeon and Okima, I think also what was so wonderful about being a part of this production is what you were saying Simeon in terms of the positive feeling that we had on set the supportive uh, energy uh, that was on set uh, and i agree with you um the crew uh our our, our dp uh director of photography uh amandillo uh -huh. uh, 
Uh, it was, I had never worked with him directly either, but we knew each other and, and we've been knowing each other for years. And so all of that good energy with the good people that Okima assembled to be a part of this production really did add, I believe, uh, such a, a, a good level of uh, productivity uh, for the film. So uh, you, a lot of good people were brought on board on this. I was, uh, yes, indeed. So guys, you're watching the Simeon Henderson Show where we're giving a voice to the people. And I am talking to the one and the only writer, director, producer, Seven Okima Gunn, and the marvelous actor. And she's an acting coach. She, she, yeah, I call her, she's a guru. <laughs> she does it all. Masekwa Myers. It is a, it's a blessing for me and a pleasure and honor to not only know you guys, but to be able to call on you and call you friends and family because I just think it's so important. One of the things that's missing in this world of entertainment is that people actually caring for each other. And, and, and it, it's more than just about, it's not about being famous. It's about telling a story. It's about making a difference. It's about changing the narrative and giving people hope and, and showing them different ways that they can prosper and grow. So Black Mama Sable is playing, it's streaming November 23rd at the Black Harvest Film Festival 2020. You can find it online because, you know, everything is online right now. But before we get out of here, I want to talk to you guys really quick about being able to still be creative and create during the pandemic. How has it been for you guys? I tell people all the time, if you've had an idea creative juices flowing. If you didn't do anything during the pandemic, you were playing around. Mm -hmm. So how's it been for you guys working through this pandemic and staying focused on, on doing, on, on walking in your purpose and your craft? Well, personally, I, I'll speak first and I'll just say that um, I believe for a lot of us, at least for me, the pandemic, helped me slow down enough to really start focusing in on some very special projects that I wanted to do. I didn't let uh, the uncertainness of this pandemic get the best of me. And I think that if you live your life and walk in the right path, then you're able to adapt when times get hard. And, and so for me, it has been a very good, productive time. I also want to say that Okima has this caring spirit. And uh, when we had to do this uh, production, it was nothing for her to say that I'm going to make sure that my uh, set is safe. So, you know, we all had our tests, we all wore our masks. And so what I'm saying is we're in a business that adaptability is, a, is the key. And if you can adapt, then you're going to fall off and die. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So don't, we don't want to do that. And exactly. so, you know, uh, stop playing. I'm, I'm with you, Simeon. Stop playing. Stop using every excuse not to do and, and, and pick yourself up and get busy. There it is. Seven. It's on you. Uh, so I, I just want to make sure we, um, we get everything correct. Cause black mama say, well, we start, it started on November 10th and it's, it's, it's not just playing on the 23rd. It's all the way up until the 23rd. So we want to give it that. We want to give it its, its due. Well, I didn't. The reason I didn't say the 10th is because the 10th is past. 10th is past. Right. <laughs> but still playing. Right. 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 So it's so, playing all yeah. the way up until the 23rd. Yes. Up until mm -hmm. the 23rd. Yes. So, so and, and if everybody goes to Black Harvest Film Festival, no, Gene Siskel Film Center dot org, you can see the schedule of when it's playing. Right, Cisco. Right, Cisco. Cisco. Cisco Film Center dot org, and then I'm also doing a Q and A with the uh, filmmakers tomorrow. But anyway, the question that you were asking was about during uh, during this time. Um, you know, for for black businesses, this is a hard time because things are shut down. But for me, I'm like, bring it on. I'm like, this is my time to create. Because last time there was a shutdown, Black Mama Sable came out. So <laughs> uh, came out of that. So I was like, yes. You know, 
I mean, I'll probably, you know, create, you know, two, three more things out of this. So for me, this is like, you know, you know how, you know, Batman is in the Batcave and just, you know, have, working his little gadgets and things. I'm like, yes, you know, what can I make next? So I'm excited. I was like, you know, sorry, black businesses and, and, and the yeah. country for the shutdown. Yeah. yeah. But uh, for me, this is like gold, you know? Well, I think, I think what I'm hearing you say is what I want people to catch. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand that when circumstances and situations arise, you have to find a way to adapt. You have to find a way to come up. You have to find a way to move forward. So during this pandemic, we have to be safe. And we have to figure out a way to continue to live and walk in our purpose and do the things that we need to do to affect change. So when you think about it from that perspective, that's a great thing. You know, it's funny, to sorry about. It's, it's funny that you say that because I think I've been this year, the, the words for this year were, were pivot and change because you can't do the things that you were doing before. And so you, you, you're standing in that in that circle, but you but you just got to pivot, you know. And so I, that's what I've been hearing about 2020 is, you know, pivot, you know, that word. So. Well, I have a new everybody know that my saying is be symbolic, simply your best. And I have a new T-shirt and hoodie that I'm making. And mm -hmm. it's going to say simply this. Life doesn't limit your dreams. You do. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Life limit your dreams you do and when you decide that you're going to get up and go and that you're going to you're going to make up you're going to make an impression and you're going to make a difference it's all on you you're the you're the it starts with you and it ends with you and that's one of the things i love about you ladies and working with you and the inspiration that you give others the inspiration that you give me i'm looking forward to a lot more from you guys and working with you and i appreciate you so much so Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you. Thank you, Simeon. Thanks for having us. So everybody, you're watching the Simeon Henderson Show, where we're giving a voice to the people. Like I said, this, this is what makes me happy. This is when I'm in my, my mode. This is where my, my world is here because my purpose is people. And I just want you guys to understand and know that whatever it is that you are hoping to do, that you're planning to do, and that you're dreaming to do, there's only one person stopping you, and that's you. So I just want you to understand that you need to get up and get it. Guys, check out Black Mama Sable. Go to CiscoFilmCenter.org and check out the Black Harvest Film Festival, the 26th annual, uh, anniversary annual, and um, look to see when Black Mama Sable is playing. Check it out. It's a great story. It's starring Masay Kwame Myers and your brother, Mr. Yeah. Chicago, Simeon Henderson, and Jada Hamilton, written and directed by my girl, Seven Okima Gun. Make sure you guys check it out, get in tune, continue to support the show, and continue to share and like the YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Masequa, and good. Seven. Tell everybody how they can find you on social media. Well, on Facebook, you can find me on uh, Seven Gun Media, and on Instagram, it's Seven Gun, S E V E N G U N N. Well, I'm my first name everywhere, Masequa, M A S E Q U A, Facebook, uh, Gmail, anywhere. <laughs> Masequa. <laughs> Keep it simple. All right, everybody, you're watching the Simeon Henderson Show on intellectualradio.com. We are live in the building. I want you guys to stay safe. And wow. before we get out of here, we have the Simeon Henderson Show's very own, the Chicago Fly Guy with the five things you need to know. That is my creative director, Shelton Smith. Everybody, check out the five things you need to know, and then we'll be back to bid you farewell. I'm the Chicago Fly Guy bringing you the best in the 411 and the top five things that you need to know right here on the Simeon Henderson Show. Number five, bad girl comedy, Lunel seeks counsel from Ayala Von Zant. Lunel is seeking to repair her relationship with her daughter, Danielle Campbell. Danielle says she felt abandoned by her mom, Lunel, and Lunel says that she is a nightmare. If you cross her. Number four, Chicago artist Jeremiah 
is on a ventilator fighting for his life due to COVID-19. We ask that all of you please send up a prayer for Chicago artist Jeremiah. Number three, Megan Thee Stallion was shot twice in the foot by Tory Lanez. Yes, Tory asked Megan to keep quiet about it and allegedly offered her money, but Megan says she's going to tell it all. I think Tory shot Megan in the pinky toe. Tory, did you shoot Megan in the pinky toe? Number two, American actor Michael B. Jordan has been voted People Magazine's most sexiest man alive. Woo but Mike, the competition is on because you haven't seen the Chicago flag guy spread as Mr. December. Yeah, Mike, I'm bucked up, bro. I'm ready. Number one, President Barack Obama is telling it all in his new memoir, A Promised Land. President Obama talks about how Michelle was so cold toward him when he decided to run for president. Michelle said, Barack, that's enough. Barack said, Michelle, I'm in it for the people. Well, get the memoir and hear how it all ends. And the semi Henderson Show is bringing you all something exciting that you can participate in this weekend. Join our host, Simeon Henderson, at the Guns Down, Gloves Up fundraiser Saturday, November 21st at 2.30 p.m. Go to Simeon Henderson on Facebook and Instagram and find out further details. I'm your Chicago Fly Guy, and these have been the best 411 and top five things that you need to know right here on the Simeon Henderson Show. Yeah! <laughs> I love the Chicago Fly Guy. Hey, I think I'm going to <laughs> I've been working out, you know, keeping myself together. I'm going to go ahead and put myself in that sexiest man. <laughs> a little more chocolate than Michael B. Jordan. But, you know, hey. <laughs> Guys, make sure you check out my girl, Seven Okay, my gun, and Masekwa Myers. Make sure you guys get the Believe motivational album. Make sure you guys get it and check it out because it is for you to motivate you to simply be your best and believe in yourself. I just want to tell you guys, I had a great time. I want to give a shout out to my executive producer, Jumani Anamdi, my producer, Jose Perez, the creative uh, director, Chicago Fly Guy, Sheldon Smith, Darren DeShazer, and Earl the Other Winfrey at intellectualradio.com. If you ever thought that you can do a talk show or you want to be a part of something, hit us up and we can uh, get you in tune. And if you like to be a guest on the Simeon Henderson show, make sure you hit me up and we'll get you on the show. And this weekend, I will be at the Hammer Havens Guns Up gloves down. It is getting kids, getting youth off the street, getting them to do something positive and making a difference in the neighborhood. Hello. Big shout out to my brother, Johnny Higgins and his wife, Alvita Higgins with Hammers Haven, non-for-profit. Guys, get in tune, donate $5, $10. If you donate $25, you get a t-shirt. So we need to make a difference and we need to be there for our youth. Masekwa and... <laughs> Seven Okima Gun. Thank you guys so much. I'm keeping you guys on until I go off. So you're watching the Simeon Henderson Show. Make sure you tune in every week. We got it covered for you. See you guys later. Love you.